Namaste. Today, myself, Srikari Ayagari, and my brother Siddhartha Ayagari would like to bring my father's research on a general virus mentioned in our ancient scriptures. To discuss this topic, we chose the narration of the gigantic demon, Karkati, that is mentioned in the Yoga Vasishtam, composed by Sage Valmiki. The Yoga Vasishta is a collection of 32,000 slokas independent of the main Ramayana storyline narrated by Sage Vasishta, who tries to lead Rama in a path of self-realization. Sage Vasishta answers all of Rama's philosophical questions in a lecture and story format that Dr. P. V. Vartak places around 7,323 BC at the earliest. The background for this discussion is as follows. King Dasharatha once ruled the Ayodhya kingdom and had four sons. Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, and Shatrugna, who go on a pilgrimage. Upon returning, Rama finds himself in a deep, depressive state. People relevant to this discussion are Sage Valmiki, who is the author of the Ramayana and Yoga Vasishta, Sage Vasishta, who is the Rajguru for the Ikshavaku dynasty that Rama descends from, who is considered to be one of the most authentic and enlightened individuals of all time, and Sage Vishwamitra, a warrior that transforms himself from a warrior clan to a Brahmarishi on par with Sage Vashishta through performing his penance with unparalleled vigor. Some context for the Yoga system is that Sage Vishwamitra approaches King Dasharatha to ask if Rama could protect the sage's rituals from demons such as Kara and Dushana. King Dasharatha feels honored at his request and sends Rama and Lakshmana to go with Sage Vishwamitra. However, Rama's depressive nature worries Dasharatha, prompting Sage Vashishta to intervene and realizing that the time has come to enlighten Rama. The Yoga Vasishtam is commonly known as the Jnana Vasishtam and the Vasishta Gita. Sages Vishwa, Mitra, and Vasishta structure the discourse into six parts Vairagya, Mumukshu Vyavahara, Utpati, Siti, Upasana Mana, and Nirvana Khanda. Sage Vishwamitra starts the Vairagya Prakarna and Mumukshu Khanda. Sage Vasishta continues from there and completes the remaining Khandas. The discourse is well attended by numerous sages, gods, and nobles for 22 continuous days. The narration is told predominantly in a story form with rich poetry that includes analogies, anomalies, and personification. The main purpose of this story is to convey to Rama that one can achieve anything with unwavered determination and supporting hard work, regardless of his current status. In this case, how a gigantic demon can become a tiny virus with intense penance. But she later becomes introspective and regrets her decision, and starts penance once again to return to her original gigantic body. However, in the process, she becomes an enlightened goddess herself. Kaikati's characteristics. Her names include Visuchika or choleric pain, and she's referred to as a gigantic demon. She lives in the Himalayan mountains, and she appears with deep, fiery eyes, long legs the size of thumara trees, long, hooked nails that glisten like sapphires, and she's always garlanded with human bones and skulls around her neck and body. Her strength is absolutely unparalleled, and her weaknesses include her insatiable hunger, a hunger so intense that even after eating everyone on the Asian continent, her hunger was still not satisfied. Her prey excludes people who are well guarded by their mantras, medicines, austerities, devotions, and charities. To find an answer for her insatiable hunger, Karakati performs penance for 1,000 years, the time needed for nature to adopt to the environment needed for her future boon to be fulfilled. Upon being pleased with her penance, Lord Brahma appears to her to grant her boon. Karakati asks to be transformed into an iron needle, Suchika, to invade the bodies of her prey with greater ease. Karakati's transformation can be described in a simple analogy describing the life cycle of a butterfly. They start as eggs that become a crawling caterpillar. Then, the caterpillar becomes an immobile pupa inside of a cocoon, and this pupa becomes a beautiful butterfly. In a similar way, that gigantic demon Karkati transformed herself into a nanoscopic virus, as shown in the picture. And this story can generally be applicable to every life-threatening virus. 
and we are using the picture of the coronavirus due to its current relevance. The diagram helps us correlate the size of the virus Suchika to the real sizes of known and recorded viruses in modern times. The smallest among recorded viruses is the Provo virus of 20 nanometers. The body of Suchika is so tiny and contains so little substance that light is able to pass through it and make it shine. The scriptures describe this tiny size very poetically. They relate that it can be seen when we squint, a kind of human microscopic observation. Suchika targets people that consume prohibited or uncooked foods, eat untimely, are gluttonous, have loose morals, and dwell in unhealthy districts. But the Vedas propose multiple eating practices that include, but are not limited to, what to eat, foods that are easily digested by the body, when to eat, munching all day is strictly discouraged. Meals after dusk or before dawn are also looked down upon. Where to eat. The setting for a meal should always be kept clean and hygienic. How to eat. In a sitting position only, using the hand to bring the food to the mouth. One should only drink still water, avoid double dipping, and eat slowly and mindfully, paying attention to every nuance of the experience. And also how much to eat. Not too much and not too little. Overconsumption is discouraged even for healthy foods, and fasting is encouraged when done with proper care. The list goes on, detailing many different guidelines across these eating practices. It is apparent that it is not as simple as saying you are what you eat. Instead, it should be you are what, when, where, how, and how much you eat. Characteristics of the suchika include that it is the size of a tip of a needle, enters through our nostrils and ears, enters the heart, disrupts our sleep, affects the liver, intestines, and other organs, and does not distinguish between the wise and unwise, and attacks the intemperate among both. Apart from giving a boon to Karkati, Lord Brahma gave a mantra to the wise to chant to be rescued from the virus. Suchika is spread and found amongst many different kinds of people those with defective arteries, pulses, and other body parts, in the bones, glands, intestines, entrails, and genitals, in the pores, lines, under the fisted fingers, on naked and uncovered bodies. It's found in those with high blood pressure who are drinkers and smokers and with less pigment in their skin, but also among dirty clothes and unclean areas of the home. But it's also found in the environment in touristy places, densely populated areas, and in dust, places with poor drainage and improper sanitation, in tree trunks, unfallen leaves, roads of snow, and in forests, with flies, crows, honeybees, and the like, but in general, on land and in the air. Life goes on for some time. However, Kirkity starts to feel bad. She asks herself, why did I take this form? It's very weak and I can't eat much. I used to be able to eat huge servings of meat at once. Where's my gigantic body? She becomes an orphan. She has no mother, father, no brothers and sisters, no friends, no personal guards, no servants. She doesn't even have a place to stay. So with these thoughts, she begins to question the boon she asked of Lord Brahma. After deep introspection and regret, Karakuri decides to do deep penance to get back to her original gigantic body. But how can a small virus travel to the Himalayas? It needs help. So Karkati enters into a vulture and provokes it to fly her to the mountains to start her penance. After reaching the Himalayas, Karkati starts her penance in the high mountains. Karkati's intense penance disturbs Indra, the king of all the gods, and he talks to Narada, the eternal sage, about Karkati. Sage Narada suggests that Indra send the wind god to inquire about the purpose of Karkati's penance. The wind god searches all over and finally identifies a tiny Karkati all by herself, with a shadow right underneath it. He was very much impressed by the penance and returns to Indra and suggests that Lord Brahma consult her. By the time Lord Brahma appears, Karkati has changed her mind. After 1,000 years of deep penance, Kirkati becomes enlightened. She no longer wants to kill anyone. She no longer wants to be a demon. She seeks nothing beyond her current state of beatitude, bliss of contentment, and self-resignation. 
However, Brahma explains, as per the laws of creation and to balance the forces of nature, she needs to stay as a demon for the time being. With the boon, Karkati asks to be reverted to her previous form. Valmiki explains, like a tiny seed gradually growing into a tree, Karkati grew from her Suchika form to her natural form. However, being an enlightened demon, she, mu she must only eat lawful food. There once was a king named Vikrama ruling the Karataka dynasty. The kingdom was affected by a virus. To search for medicines and mantras to help his people, he, along with his brave and wise minister, wandered and searched through and around the forests. Gargati sees them and tries to test their knowledge on enlightenment. If they pass, they prove themselves, and she spares them. Otherwise, she enjoys a meal. She asks the pair questions to test their logic and knowledge, and she is impressed by the wisdom in their responses. She decides to fulfill their wish to save their people from the virus and initiates the mantra to them. In return, King Vikrama offers her his friendship and a way for Gargati to feast on lawful food by sending her the prisoners that are sentenced to death. Gargati agrees, and King Vikrama requests her to be his guest. She changes her form to a beautiful young woman and enters his palace and enjoys all the human comforts. However, very soon she returns to a nearby cave and begins her penance again. As per their deal, when she comes out of her jnana samadhi, or penance, she feels hungry and eats all the prisoners that deserve the death penalty. This continues for generations. Every king in the Karataka dynasty worships Gargati before they take the throne. And over a period of time, she completely stops coming out of her cave. A huge statue has been built in her honor and people come from far and wide to worship for their well-being and for wealth. She is named after Kandara Devi, or Mangalatara Devi. As you see in the video, a virus is a part of creation. The most important thing to be noticed is that even after Karkati is reluctant to go back to being a demon, Brahma persuades her to go back to her demonic nature to punish the ignorant and the careless. There is a cure in the form of medicines, prayer, and suggested healthy and hygienic practices for the wise. God discourages the lazy and the careless. These two qualities are man-made and unnatural. As we see throughout Gargari's narration, one can achieve anything with unwavered determination and supporting hard work. As per Hindu Dharma, that is the law of nature. To summarize everything we've covered today, the Vasuchika virus is dangerous and contagious. It is deadly, but not permanent. There are vaccines and medicines that can be found or prepared, and chanting mantras and worshipping can relieve people from the virus. It can be controlled by keeping the body and living environment clean and hygienic. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you all appreciate the amount of details that has been documented about deadly viruses along with preventative measures over 9,000 years ago. As mentioned earlier, Hindu Dharma states that one can achieve anything with unwavered determination and supporting hard work, regardless of who it is. Even a demon can become a goddess. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share for future content.